What unfolds in the pages of this book is the monumental will of these women to persevere against the odds. In October 1934, the Red Army was surrounded by the, the Nationalists. There were a million troops that had encircled them in their southeast Jiangxi province stronghold. They were getting bombed by American bombers that the Nationalists were, were flying. They were getting annihilated. They had to do something bold uh, to escape. They put together a plan and they vanished overnight. One of the longest military marches in history, 4,000 miles in one year on foot. There were 30 women with an army of 86,000 men and there was a rather rigorous selection process before they set off. If male soldiers went into a village, the villagers would flee, but the women could go in and they could convince people to sell them food, to send their sons and their husbands for the cause that they represented. This is Jia Jinshan, the hardest of the Long March Mountains for the First Front Army. The women uh, had the toughest time here. They drank boiling water with hot peppers in it before they climbed because they believed that the hot peppers would keep them warm inside and help them with altitude sickness. There's a false summit right up above and the marchers in the First Army thought that it was the summit. And so when they got to the top, it was doubly hard. They had to go another um, thousand meters. It became a um, a turning point for the, the communists in China. It burnished their image worldwide. It made Mao the leader that he was, and it made these 30 women that were with him proven leaders. The Long March soldiers came right over this range right here, Yakexia. It's 14,500 feet. We're at 13,500. The women were suffering from altitude sickness up there. It's freezing cold, raining. The wind blows in, the clouds come in in a matter of seconds. It can sleet, snow. They've been through it all. This was their third snowy mountain. They still have another one right over this ridge here. And they're malnourished. They're in straw sandals. They're in cotton clothing. They're freezing. They have heavy loads to carry. This has about reduced them to as, as low a point as they'll be on the long march. This epic journey took them across southern China from east to west. They went up the, the western side of China on the Tibetan Plateau. They ended up in north central China in Shenxi province. In the book, I want the reader to walk down the trail with these women to witness the challenges they faced, to cross the rivers, to climb the mountains, nursing one another and nursing the men and to witness the incredible compassion uh, these women had for each other, to see how they persevered and came out stronger and to see what they accomplished. In, in history, this is just a major landmark uh, for women, for women's liberation. Uh, it was a great moment when, when women took their future uh, in their own hands and gave this great effort to escape the, the bonds of, of history that had kept them down.